City of Apache Junction work session to order. Roll call. Mayor Surdy. Here. Vice Mayor Wilson. Here. Councilmember Evans. Here. Councilmember Rizzi. Present. Councilmember Schroeder. Here. Councilmember Strubel. Here. You have a quorum, Your Honor. First up is interviews for, of applicants for annual appointments and reappointments to Board of Adjustment, Library Board, Parks and Recreation, Planning and Zoning. And uh, Jennifer, why don't you kick that off and let us know what order we might go in and how this is going to work. Certainly, Your Honor. Um, before you are the four of the city's boards and commissions, which have expiring commission terms October 31st of this year, the applicants have been contacted by their liaison for the border commission, so most of them are present this evening. <coughs> um, you can choose any order you wish. If you like to take the first border commission is the Board of Adjustment. It's a seven-member board. There are two positions with terms expiring at the end of the October, and there is currently one vacancy. Okay. One applicant is seeking reappointment, and you have three new applicants. A lot of times you'll see the same name applying on different positions, so some of the uh, their basic introductions could be the same, but maybe they could come up anyway and tell us why they would, what they see different of that particular board. So we might as well go in the order they're in. Let's go with... Your Honor? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, in the past we've talked about, as the council when people are on multiple boards and having a lot of new talent available. This time, and the last time both, we had a lot of very experienced <coughs> applicants. And I wanna know how everyone else feels about someone that's already on some other boards. Do we wanna put them on more boards or do we wanna look for the newer applicants. So, Joel, we're okay to discuss this now. This is a work session, correct? <laughs> Absolutely, that's a policy decision yep. that you all would, can make. So I think a lot of times, Gail would have this conversation <laughs> after we're all done, but yeah, let, let's have it now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I thought. So as we're looking at these, we can consider that, and, uh, and some of these boards are a lot more work than others. Some barely meet. Some, I mean, planning and zoning, there's certain times I think they actually work harder than council meetings. I mean, with their research and their, and the details. The, they, they do the hard part of all of the minute details that they have to look at that are already done by the time they reach the council, which is why it's so important that a board like that and why it's important that they work with us and cooperate with us. So, very important. I don't necessarily... <clears throat> I understand that we have people that are on some of the boards, but we have people that have um, served on these boards for a long period of time. They've served the community well, and I don't necessarily want to pull the rug out from under them. I think it just depends. I think we need to listen to all the applicants and uh, you know, go from there, find out what they can bring to the board. Um, there might be, uh, we may need to make changes, but um, at the same time, I'm not gonna disqualify somebody just simply because they've served for a long time or served on several different boards. I wanna hear uh, all the applicants and make the decision from there, not based on um, you know, somebody we've, that's already been on the well, board. We've never had to impeach anybody. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't think of it as kicking someone to the curb that has served, but if they're currently serving already on multiple boards <clears throat> and they're applying for another board, you know, to have us use that as part of the consideration process, you know, in order that right. it's so nice we get new people applying. So perhaps as the uh, applicants come up, if they could tell us what boards they're already on. And I think we've asked in the past, would they care to step off of other boards too? I don't know if that will apply tonight or not, but I know I've heard that question asked before. Does anyone else have any comments before we get started? I just have one. So is, is it okay for um, <clears throat> somebody to be on uh, uh, planning and zoning and then board of adjustments also? Yeah. Is there any? That's the only one. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Board of adjustment is a quasi-judicial um, forum and also they review decisions of the development services uh, zoning administrator so the answer is no 
you cannot serve on the Board of Adjustment at the same time as the Planning and Zoning Commission. It'd be an incompatibility of appointment. And I believe that's the only one where there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. Correct. We have, yeah. We've had sewer board members who you also appoint, but you never see them because you're not the board. But uh, they can serve on uh, city boards and commissions. Okay. Any other comments? <clears throat> Okay, so hopefully that explains to some of the applicants in the in the office in the uh, audience also. So I'm going to go in the order that they're listed on the board there. So we have board of adjustment, reappointment, Frank Shane Beck. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, board uh, members of the council. I'm here to uh, reapply for the board of adjustment. I've been the chairman here recently. I really enjoy serving on that uh, board, but I am kind of the, the, the perfect case, uh, the perfect storm that Gail has brought up. And so far as if you would, I'm also applying for the planning and zoning. But on a general subject of what you brought up as far as somebody new, I think there, there, there is a real need to get people from the CLI program onto boards and, and uh, commissions. And there are boards and commissions that don't meet as often whose duties probably aren't as, as critical as others. I, I think my, my period on the Board of Adjustment is kind of a break-in period for planning and zoning. That would be kind of a natural progression. Uh, this year, though, you have a couple of incumbents applying that are also very qualified. I am on the library board kind of because there was nobody else at the time. Um, and I was glad to take the position and, and fill it. But I think that's, that's a place where some of our CLI applicants should know that there are opportunities. Park and Rec, we do a little bit more work there. I enjoy being on that because we are an active board. I would gladly give my library board seat up to somebody who was, who was out of the, the graduate program and ready to move forward. Yeah. So I, I would like to be considered for planning and zoning. I do enjoy being on a board of adjustment. I think I'm serving the city well there. So if your decision is not to put me on planning and zoning, I sure would like to stay on the Board of Adjustment. Any, any questions for Frank? Thank you. Okay. Jennifer, uh, in, in, in our tablets, when we're looking at Board of Adjustment, we have some pe names that are highlighted in yellow. There's a vacancy, there's Frank reappointment. And the other person that's highlighted, do you know, is she stepping down? Is that, is why that Judy highlight? Borey? Yes. Uh, she did not apply for reappointment to the Board of Adjustment. Okay. So that's, so she's opening up a position there. Okay. So that explains that then. So can we go back to that other page? <laughs> yeah. You threw a monkey oh, wrench at it. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. Your Honor, I would almost um, just want to confirm that maybe with the applicants, because we've heard in the past that maybe there was a, some wires crossed, they didn't get an email, or okay, so we just, can we just confirm with the applicant for sure that they did not uh, want to reapply, just to double check? Is that, I mean, can we do that? Just can we ask Ms. Judy Borey? <laughs> can she shake her head yes and no? She can apply. Well, I don't have to. What? Seven and one vacant. Okay. We need um, Mr. Mayor. Three. Yeah. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Three. She needs to come up so we, the speaker yeah. picks it up. Sorry, Judy. We just wanted to make sure that there wasn't some misinformation or that we did, did miscommunication, I should say. Right. That you missed. It's happened well, in the I, past. I did talk to Barbara about it, and um, uh, when she asked if I'd filled out the application, and um, but I wanted to, you know, give someone else a chance. It's, it, you know, it's probably a better fit for someone else, uh, you know, and I'm on three other commissions and boards, so I mean, this was the fourth one. And, and I work part-time, so I'm, you know, scrambling trying to make all these meetings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, how about Treva Williams? Is this the Treva is not here. No. Dion Schmoyer. That's the letter. That's the letter, yeah. Okay. Does it say he won't be here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's okay. traveling. And Sean O'Hara. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. 
Um, I'm here because I'd really like to get more involved in the community and direction that we're going forward in. Uh, the recent acquisition of almost 7,000 acres from the Bureau of Land Management gives us an opportunity, I think, to attract uh, some opportunities for new businesses in the area, um, which I think we need. I think we need to start looking towards the future and where the city would like to wind up in the next 15 to 20 years. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of people starting to move out this direction permanently, uh, not just seasonal. And I think we need to take a look at what that's going to, how that's going to impact the city and the direction that we go in to kind of grow alongside of Queen Creek as they, they start to grow as well and expand. So I would like your consideration for either board. Uh, I understand that I can't sit on both. So whichever one, I think I could positively impact the future of the city and provide some guidance and direction on to what I think uh, my, my fellow neighbors would like to see happen as well. Okay, how long have you lived in the city? Uh, we've been here just over two years. We own a home, and that's one of the reasons I would like to see a uh, positive direction for the city because, frankly, it's an investment, and it's an investment in the city and the future for my family. Are you in one of the more rural areas or urban? No, we're right, up, right off Royal Palm. Okay. Do you consider yourself because the board you're going for like like the attorney said it's more of like you're actually this is the closest you'll be to becoming a judge <laughs> and uh you have to rule on <clears throat> other things that have happened before and you're like the final arbiter on that uh pro business no no thought about it i mean what I'm, you... I'm definitely pro business um and I do understand the impact that that board has because the Board of Adjustment is, is the final say on what the Zoning Commission does. So I would not take that responsibility lightly. Property rights? Correct. Horse community? <laughs> yes, horse community. Okay. But you sold Harleys too. Yes, I did. <laughs> I was you gotta get the whole spectrum. That's when we first moved out here. Um, we didn't know anyone when we moved here. My girlfriend got transferred out here and I figured it was a good way to meet people that had like interests and uh, kind of network with, with people okay. in the Valley. Okay. So what do you do with your, your you work at Paradigm Consulting? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm actually contracted right now with APS. I'm a project manager three. So I'm working with uh, a lot of IT projects for, uh, for Arizona Public Service. Robert, did you attend the uh, city leadership institution? I did not. Okay. And you could still do that while you are on a board also, which gives uh, you a better overview of the, how the whole city runs. I would absolutely be willing to do that. Okay. If no one other questions, then thank you. Thank you for time. Let's go on to uh, library board with Judy Borey. <clears throat> and here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, any questions for so me or? Your reappointment. So this is one you would rather prefer over Board of Adjustment. Yes. yes. And I did throw you under the bus to put you on Board of Adjustments last no, time. It was you. <laughs> I apologize. And what, other, what are the other two boards you're on? I am on Health and Human Services and also the Park and Rec Board. Did you and, I, that's and I like all, all three of these boards. They're active, um, um, involve really a lot of community, you know, just involvement in the community, and it's just you know, really a good fit for me. So the health and human services doesn't meet. How often do they meet? It's not all year long. It's not all year long. It's maybe, uh, we're starting to meet more, more often. And we're also going to be doing some uh, visits to some of the, um, you know, the different organizations that we've uh, given out money to. I think when they do meet, you crunch the numbers pretty hard, don't you? We do, we do. And we try to be fair across the board, so it's. Any 
more questions for Judy. So what's your, what do you think your, or the library boards or commission's uh, biggest accomplishment in the last year or two? Well, I think, I think putting in that room in the back really helped with the different uh, events that have gone on. And I, and I just never have seen a library have as many events as this library does. And what a great asset it is to this community. I'm in the library all the time and have stacks of books I'm constantly going through myself and donating them back to the library. And so I, I'd like, I like seeing the involvement in, in the Friends of the Library and, and just the, you know, the whole staff. The staff is great. This is gonna sound like a crazy question, but what book are you reading right now? Right now? Oh, just a fluff piece, you know, just something that's just fun. Yeah. You know, all, all during my work life, I was reading books on, you know, management and self-help and all of these different kinds of things. And once I retired, it was time for me to just do the mysteries and all different other kinds of books. So it's fun. Do you have a favorite author? Uh, I have, let's see, uh, Jana De Leon. Um, I have uh, Childs. Uh, she does mysteries, so I just do just all different kinds, kinds of books. Cool. So Judy, just to recap, it was Health and Human <coughs> Services Library, the Board of Adjustments. You're willing to step down, and on. then also Parks and Rec. And Parks and Rec. If we were to make room for an, uh, maybe a new um, person to come, is there one in particular that you might not? Or that you might favor over others if we were to make some room, what would you That's think? That's a toughie. That's like yeah. dividing well, up my children, you know? Krista, she's not up expired on any of the other okay, boards. Okay, so it was it's just I was the, it was the yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe in the if you, in a year or two when she's up, maybe then we could Got it. Okay. All right, any if no. thank you. Okay. Teresa Nesser, most people call her Tess. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Tess Nesser. Um, I'm up for reappointment on library board. I presently serve library board and planning and zoning. I was on Parks and Rec, but I stepped down last year. Um, actually April of last year. <clears throat> um, I've been on library board for 21 years. I find the work at the library, well, to be honest, let's back up. We haven't met since April, the library board. It's not a board that's been real active because lack of agenda items. The library kind of runs itself. It's, it's very well organized. So it doesn't require monthly meetings just for the sake of having a monthly meeting. Uh, I would like to stay on the library board uh, because I find reading fundamental. Uh, I probably have between 500 and 1,000 books in my house right now. Uh, I'm a voracious reader, and uh, sitting right by my, my chair is a stack that's <laughs> quite high. I don't go in the library without buying, buying about half a dozen books at the second chapter because... Well, very selfish of you. Why don't you give those books up and let other people read them? Because I, re I reread them. Okay. <laughs> You can go into the second chapter at the library and you can buy books for a quarter. Uh, novels, hardback novels for 50 cents. <clears throat> so, and they're not all just old books either. So, I don't know what else you want me to tell you, but I'm here for any questions. And this is the only time you're appearing on this list tonight, so. Yes, sir. Any other questions for Tess? You've just been a great asset to the community. Well, thank you. I thank you. You know, I was raised that way, but to be involved in your community, you can't make a community better if you don't be involved. And that's what I've tried to do since, <coughs> you 
you know, since back in the 90s when I got involved with the city. And for you, Jeff, um, I'm reading Catcher in the Rye right oh, now. That's an awesome book. <laughs> I'm going back and reading some of the old books that I haven't read for 50 or so years, so. Yeah, that one's an awesome book. And well, I never had read it before, and it's, it's really a surprise, oh, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, you say that you didn't, you haven't met since April because the, the library has run well, and it is. You know, there's no doubt about that. We're, we get a lot of accolades not just from in our community, but throughout the state for how well our, our um, library runs and the activities that goes through it, go, that, that we provide and, and the events and all that. But, mm -hmm. so, but that being said, where would you like the library? Is there anything additional that you would like to have the library to have accomplished in the next five to 10 years? Is there something that we could do more? Hmm. I think that's a question where we have to grow as the community grows. I think we're going to eventually need, um, what do you call it, um, annexes. I remember we discussed that once maybe 10 years ago, uh, <clears throat> that as our community gets bigger, we can't just stay right here. We're going to have to, whether it be opening a, a smaller Satellite. little library annex in a, in a strip mall someplace or something, um, not necessarily another whole big library being built, but I think that is one thing that is a possibility of, uh, of a definite need that our community would benefit the community. Uh, we even discussed once, I brought it up to the library board about a, a, a bookmobile. Uh, whether that's feasible or not, who knows? I mean, that was quite a few years ago when we, they looked into that. So I'm not, I don't know what the particulars are right now about how feasible that would be. But I think it's very important to do whatever <coughs> to get younger people to use the library. Uh, they don't have to read a, a paper book. I don't, you know, don't have any problem with that. I still have paper books, but I also use my Kindle all the time. Um, but just reading. And if you don't make it available to them, don't make it difficult. Do everything. The library needs to bend over backwards to make the library services available to the public. Any more questions? Then thank you. Okay. Dokie. Should I read this how it's wit written or not? Willia? Willa. William. Let's give him an M on that. Willia. Willa. <laughs> it says Willa Howard. Willia. It's Council Willie Howard. I'm here to uh, reapply for the library board. I'm on the public safety uh, retirement committee uh, with the mayor, uh, planning and zoning, and I'm here to reapply for the library. I've enjoyed working with the people on the uh, library. There's, uh, as Tess said, we don't meet that often, but uh, there are things that come up and we provide our input and, and the staff is willing to listen and we're willing to listen to some great people. Uh, I do visit other libraries around and uh, the library in Apache Junction is one of the best in the, in the East Valley. Uh, I have friends who have told me, hey, you guys have a great library out there for such a small community and uh, I'd love to continue to be a part of that. Jeff, uh, you might want to know what I'm reading. Yep. <laughs> it's the principles of a mediator. Of a mediator? I'm a federal mediator, uh -huh. been trained, and uh, I keep my skills updated because I read every week a portion of the mediator guide. So that's, that's what I do. I love mysteries. <laughs> I read all kinds of mysteries. I try to solve all kinds of mystery cases. I, I'll read the beginning of the book and I'll figure out where we're going by the middle of it. So that's where I am. Questions? 
Just on that, when we were at the <clears throat> city of uh, the league conference, whatever it's called, um, I went to a, a session that was talking about mediation about stuff, and they mentioned that book. So it's a well, it's a well um, received and, and thought out book. So okay. it's a good one. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm reading Principles of a Meat Eater. No meat eater. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's close. <laughs> Any questions for <laughs> Willie? So obviously you love this board and you'd like to stay on if possible, so. I would if, 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 uh, if that's your choice. Yeah, okay, please. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Willie. And we've established that Treva Williams is not here. How about James Jackson? So I'm one of the new guys in the, in the group. Uh, mayor, vice mayor and council and, and others. Uh, my name is uh, Jim Jackson. James Jackson is fine, it doesn't matter. I've actually applied for a couple of the boards um, and I don't have to serve on all of them because I certainly want to give everybody the opportunity to serve. I am a recent graduate of, the, of Mr. L <laughs> over there, so I've, uh, I, I survived, uh, I survived his, uh, his sessions and they were wonderful. I actually learned a lot and uh, um, looking for the opportunity to serve. I've, uh, um, I've actually been a member or actually a resident of Apache Junction for about three years. I uh, moved here from Michigan, um, and I'm a permanent resident. I'm not, uh, I'm not a seasonal person. Uh, I served my community while in Troy quite a bit, but not uh, in a government position. I uh, served in various uh, athletic organizations. I have five kids, and so uh, baseball was pretty big in, the, in that area, and so I actually served on... Uh, local boards for, for our baseball organization in Troy. It was not Little League. It was, it was actually built on our own because we didn't like all the things Little League did. And I served as the president of that organization for 10 years. So, um, as well as coach and all the other things to get my kids uh, involved in sports. But uh, now I'm in uh, Apache Junction, I'm retired. I need something else to do. <laughs> so, uh, so I actually looking at uh, the library, I signed up for Parks and Rec and the new Arts Commission. I'm actually a, uh, my, uh, my degree is in mathematics and music. Yes, they go together. Yes, they and, do. Uh, <laughs> they do. Very well. And uh, they go very well. Um, I'm actually a, an, into vocal music. I uh, have uh, sung in many organizations uh, since high school, basically, so, and I've never quit. Um, I, uh, if you ask what I'm currently reading, uh, there isn't a single book. Uh, I'm actually reading about six books right now. Uh -huh. um, uh, some of them with my grandchildren. Uh, actually, I have a, a, a nine-year-old uh, grandchild. I have 15, 16 grandchildren. I just got a new one. Um, uh, I, one, of my, uh, one of my grandchildren is nine, and we're actually in the uh, middle of the uh, trilogy for The Lord of the Rings. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, and he's only nine. But so I think it uh, kind of lets you know that I've raised my kids to be readers. Um, actually, my my eldest was reading way before she was talking, and uh, and we uh, and and that's that's not an exaggeration. We uh, um, we we taught our children that reading was important. And uh, what would I do if you were going to ask me uh, what are some of the things that we could do for the library? Um, uh, yes, I'm a card-carrying member. I guess I should say that first. <laughs> um, but additionally, I think, um, you know, I, I think we need to find ways, um, more ways to get the young people to read. Um, and, and not read because the school is making them read, because, read because they want to. There are lots of medium, there are books, and of course there are e-books. I use both. Um, but I think uh, um, book clubs, we run book clubs during the summer or book activities for the kids out of the library. I'd like to see those all year. Uh, get the kids involved in, in a book group. Um, you know, we have book clubs for adults. Why not for kids? Um, you have all the kids, they could, you know, we can pick books that are easily understood by all of them and, uh, and get their discussion and get them talking about books and get them to realize that how they see the book, somebody else is going to see it different, and that's okay. You know, that, that's a good thing. And there's probably a lot of other things that we can do as well. Anyways, that's my pitch for the library. So you're not a Wolverine, are you? 
I, I did not go to the, but I do cheer for them, I should say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that already, that already <laughs> cut it down. All right. <laughs> I was going to wear my, uh, my maize and blue, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I did not attend uh, Michigan. <laughs> May I ask you, would you prefer possible Arts Commission or the library? Which would be your biggest preference? I guess if I had my druthers, uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, okay. I think one of, one of the but things that okay. we know about the Art Commission is, is that we don't know where it's going to go yet. Absolutely. It's new, you know, um, and uh, uh, Obviously, I have a great love of the arts. Mine is only, you know, my personal, personally, I've only been involved, well, actually, I've been involved in theater uh, quite a bit as well. I've actually been in several productions that traveled actually around the nation um, with, uh, with various shows. So, uh, so I certainly am into drama. I'm certainly into music. But there's a lot more to arts than that. And uh, um, anybody that has the love of arts, I'm with them. <laughs> Do you... Uh you watch the council meetings online. Have you seen our discussions about the Art Commission? I have seen a couple of them. I have not seen them all, I have to admit. We wonder if people watch those. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have, yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, did you live in the city of Troy? I did. Yeah, I'm a Michigander. My dad worked for the city of Troy for 30 years. Okay. Still resides in Royal Oak. Okay. Um, and yes, we do root for the Wolverines. <laughs> Well, yeah. it, gets <laughs> it gets boring watching them lose to the Buckeyes all oh, the time. okay, okay. So, <laughs> well, if that's where we're going to go. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll see here, what, uh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But um, so that Art Commission, now that's kind of a ground floor thing, you know. And, it is, yeah. And I'm assuming that the commission is going to kind of set the bar on what we expect out of it. So is that something you'd be up for the challenge? I think so. Okay. I think so, yeah. Anyone else? And uh, we see you down for the other two. Uh, well, boards. you see me on uh, Parks and Rec, and then actually, you know, Arts is next week or two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So thank you. Uh, Barbara Fitzgerald. No. So we're going to move on to Parks and Recreation. Luciano Bazin. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Councilmen. My name is Luciano Bazin. I live in Apache Junction nine and a half years. I serve in several boards. Right now, I'm a board of adjustment, and I was a library board and a park of recreation. But I'm, I'm here for the park of recreation and library board. Board adjustment, I still have that there. Where to go? I was nominated last year only for one year on those two commissions, so this will be the second time. So, if I'm gonna be. So, Luciano, tell me again. It was Board of Adjustments, and the Parks and Recreation, and what was the other one? A library board. Library. But you're not up for the. You're I'm up. Up, no, I'm up the library board and park and recreation. And so I'm going to ask the same question as Judy, and, and even though you're not up for the other boards, you will in the future be interviewed for them. <clears throat> so if we were to start talking about it now, if you were to pick two of the three, what would be your choices? Two of the three? <clears throat> That's a good question. I really the most important person there is but the adjustment, you know, that um, is a really important to me, whatever any year, so. But like I said, um, it was the first year in the beginning, I have to listen what the other people say, but I now I know what they're expecting, mm -hmm. especially the park and recreation. And I didn't even know where, where the parks, I have to go visit more to see what it's all about, so, you know. And um, later we were talking a lot about the dog park and all that one, and actually she's probably going to talk about tonight, and we discussed quite a few places, or whatever, you know. So, 
I think I contributed in those two places. You, you think Parks and Rec over the library? Yes. Okay. But you think Board of Adjustment's the most important? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yeah. that's people's, important, but I'm there for another couple yeah. years, so I'm okay yeah. on that. And it is important because people's livelihoods and their homes and stuff. It's, very, it's very important, really. Yeah. It's like a court, yeah. you know? So, yeah, that, that's very important. And you have to do a lot of digging and things to find out what it's all about, not only when you come over here, but you have to investigate to be ready for any questions that's coming all about. <coughs> yeah. Anyone you're else? Not, you're not up for reappointment on the Board of Adjustment. <laughs> no. No. Okay, no. I'm just making sure everybody. No, no. no. I'm only reappointed library board and park of recreation. Well, you guys all read books, but I study name origins. You're Italian. I thought all Italian names ended with a vowel. Not really. I'm from northern Italy. Where I was born, it was not Italy, it was Austria. Okay. <laughs> and my, all my family is Austria descent, like me. All right. But I was born in Italy, but not my, but not my, my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, and so on and so forth. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Heather Moeller. German name. See? See how much? <laughs> Hello and good evening. I'm Heather Moeller. I've only served on Parks and Recreation Commission Board and uh, only one term, so I would love to do it again. I've lived in AJ since I was five. Um, I worked for Parks and Rec for about ten and a half years. And do you have any questions? It just seems like a good fit for you. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Does she still do voiceover work for us, too? <laughs> yes. I'm available. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably got a birthday coming up or something, yeah. too. I do. 1014. <laughs> Columbus Day or Indian, Indian, I don't know the new words. Indian Indians people? Indigenous. Yes. Indigenous. There yes. as well. That's and Heather does do voiceover every once in a while. Yeah. Great for us. Great work. Yeah, if you want a positive voice on one of our city videos, she's narrated them before, and she does an awesome job on that. So. Thanks. So where, do you, where would you like to see the Parks and Rec Department? What the next big accomplishment? I know we're working, we're working on the dog park. I'm super excited about the dog park. Yeah, I have three so, dogs, so I'm really excited about that. So do you, have you thought about where you could assist our staff moving forward to something, another project or something? Do you see something of that nature? To be honest with you, I have not thought past the dog park because I'm so stoked about the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. But there's always room for growth. I mean, like, we got the new housings coming in. So with that, even though they have their own community, <coughs> usually within their own community, I definitely think there should be more availability of different parks. And who knows what the future holds? I mean, like pickleball took off. That's crazy to me. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure where the future is going, but I know it's going because AJ is the place to be. That's right. <laughs> okay. Yep. So would have been interesting. Uh, we're going to regrade the whole dog park because it's a retention basin now, and how it would have handled the water. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. So going to be important decisions there. So. Oh, yeah. If no other questions, we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got Treva Williams again, James Jackson again. So for my second time, um, I actually put myself down for Parks and Rec because during the CLI, when uh, Parks and Rec came in uh, um, and made their presentation on that day, I was kind of the thorn in the in the in the group um, because I thought that they weren't doing anything for me. Um, I'm in the very southern uh, part of the city. I'm down at Baseline, and uh, there's really nothing over there um, for uh, from a parks and recreation standpoint. They're they're talking about all the great things that are happening. Dog parks. I have a cat. So I don't care about dog park, <laughs> you know. Um, there, there, you're off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I realized that uh, my uh, perhaps a little bit of negativity during the CLI may make me a, not a good person to put on a on a uh, on their board. Um, 
I would just like to see them uh, do more for not just the northern ridge of the community, but the southern ridge as well. We do have the CAP canal there. If you jump the fence, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and you could bring your cat to the dog park. <laughs> it might be more He'd probably have a good time, exactly. <laughs> Use the bike lane to ride to the park. There you go. So. Well, I don't know how much we want to just talk up here, but you're going to be right up against the 6,600 acres that we're annexing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like and I Ms. do see that as a future possibility. Like Miss Nesser said, I mean, there could be some satellite activities Absolutely. down in that area. Absolutely. Especially if it's a master plan community. You bet. You bet. And, yeah. and just so you know, it, it's okay to have a dissenting vote. Uh, a dissenting I know. I know. <laughs> the rest of the group. <laughs> it's good to get other points of view out I, there. I, 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 I tend here. to be the devil's advocate in pretty much every, every board that I'm on. Nothing but. wrong aside, with that. Aside from, <laughs> aside from the cat lover, I'm just kind of uh, like, oh. I'm not actually a cat lover. I, love, I like dogs. I'm just in one of those 55 communities, and the dogs just... I don't want to keep it in the house. <laughs> I just don't think it's fair to the dog. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Thanks. Siri Gerstner. Hello, and thank you for having me. Um, my name's Siri Gerstner, as you know. I have lived in Apache Junction for four and a half years now. We bought our home back in 2015. Um, I'm on other boards in other cities that deal with homelessness, because um, that is something that we dealt with as a family. So I thought that to give back, the best thing to do was to be a part of fixing the problem. Um, we've been here long enough that I feel like I am part of the community and my children are part of the community. They're growing up here. They're 13 and 15 now. And uh, my 15 year old always says, you need to do more, you need to do more. Um, so she pushes me <laughs> a lot to be a part of where she's growing up. Um, they're avid readers, I am not. <coughs> Uh, I am reading a book, but only because I'm in school for my master's degree oh. in nonprofit leadership <laughs> and entrepreneurism. And those are boring. So. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> and hard. Goodness. Yeah. My mom says, but you're going to be a master. And I'm like, a master of what? <laughs> um, that's, that's me. I've got three dogs, a cat, a bunny rabbit, and a <laughs> bird. <laughs> are you thinking about taking the CLI class? The Citizens Leadership Institute. I did see that, and yes, that is very interesting. Could you get a little closer to the mic? You're so soft-spoken. Just you, it'll move. To I'm move. not really soft-spoken. I promise yeah, you. I'm just it. real <laughs> nervous right now. But uh, when you get to know me, you'll hear me from back there. Uh, <laughs> you say you're on other boards, or you have been on other boards? I have been on other boards. I am currently on one at Save the Family in it's Mesa. A county is that like a county-wide board? It's a uh, Mesa. Um, homeless shelter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's no conflict with that obviously that's a an asset to be on something like that no conflict yeah so you you've also applied for health and human services and then the arts council or out arts commission is if you had <laughs> we keep asking this is then somebody said that it's like asking which child you want but um, <laughs> My you passion would be health and human services. Um, I, I've started a business called Tiny to Teen Services, mm -hmm. which is a parent aid company. We support parents whose children have been removed from home, um, you know, uh, dealing with mental health issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, all of that would be very interesting to me, more to learn, more to observe, and more to, uh, you know, be a part of and help from my perspective. Um, but arts and parks, those seem interesting and exciting as well, the growth. Your two kids, do they partake in any of the parks and rec or, uh, activities now? No, they don't. No. Mm -mm. Not at this time. Anyone else? Where did you move from? Uh, I'm originally from Chicago, but my children were born in Springfield, Missouri. 
She got smart, moved away from Chicago. <laughs> yes, absolutely. When my children were born, it was time to go. <laughs> great place to visit, not a great place to raise children. But the food's good. <laughs> If no other questions, we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and P and Z, we have Michael McGraw. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. My name is Mike McGraw, and I'm reapplying for the Planning and Zoning Commissioner. I'm also on another board, the Industrial authority, adjustment, I don't know, we've never met, so I'm not sure what it's all about. Um, <laughs> I find being on the planning and zoning has been um, rewarding in that I am able to uh, see a lot of what goes on in this city as far as growth is concerned and try to be the voice of reason for some of the things that pop up. And you made a good point when you said that we do all the dirty work before you guys get it, and we do. And I find that rewarding as well. And we appreciate it. And uh, so I am reapplying, and I hope you see fit to accept my uh, application. Any questions for Mike? I got so, Yes. I was waiting. Jeff kind of eagled the screen for a second. This will be your third appointment. No. Your third, start of the third term, right? You've already been appointed once? I, um, I've been appointed once, and this will be the second on planning and zoning. The second? Okay, so you, you pretty much got a lockdown of how things work there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone on this side? No. <gasps> okay, thank you. Thanks. Dave Hanch. Hanchy. Yeah, we, we always yes. get that one wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor, Council Members. Uh, I want to thank you for appointing me midterm this last time to have an honor to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission. I would like to keep serving. It's been, I think I started like January is when we really started meeting, and it's just been great, and I'd love to continue to serve the community. Um, it's, it's really great. Um, I graduated uh, CLI in 2017. Um, it's been more than I expected, and I love it, and I want to keep doing it. It's definitely an interesting board. It's fun. <laughs> it's very interesting, and I, I definitely enjoy it. I think it's more fun than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes. 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 It, well, you don't have to take. You, make you don't have to take a bunch of phone calls about trash service. So. No, I let you do yeah. that. <laughs> 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 and I'm in support for it, so thank you. Yeah. And we got or, Jeff Dubel. Yeah. Or going around Make to it. clean up the side of the streets either. Yeah, that's, that's this week. All the phone calls have been, when are you going to clean my street and get my driveway open? I think the city did really good overall. I mean, for what we got hit with, and I live off Royal Palm, north of the trail, and just I'm a little bit, you know, west of where Tomahawk and all that mess was. Yeah. But I, I think overall it's been, you know, there's still some mess to do, but I think it's been a good which overall. is why PNZ is so important, so that you understand yep. floodplains and things. I think if the city were forming right now, that no one would even be allowed to live along Tomahawk, along Weeks Wash. Well, and I, I mean, think with some good reason, too. But, yeah. I mean, there's people there, so we have to address it and move forward. And, I mean, we need to learn from all these experiences, and I think that's great about yeah. all this. So. Any, any more questions for Dave? Yeah, Dave, would you be interested in any other boards? I'm on the Construction Board of Appeals. Um, a board that you like? Yeah, we've never met, so <laughs> I can't tell you how well I like that one. I'm <laughs> um, actually up for reappointment on that. I think on the 15th, we have to come in for that. If I had to give it up, i will give it up. I kind of went on because nobody else uh, was on it. It was my first board. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I, I love planning and zoning. Um, I wouldn't mind the Board of Adjustments at some point, but... You know, there's a conflict there, so I don't even consider it at this point. Um, I, I, I'm just having so much fun with the planning and zoning. I really want to focus on that one. And that it's the one I always wanted to get on, and I got lucky, and, yeah. and I'm enjoying it. And, I, uh, you know, the only other place I think I may want to eventually move to would be maybe council. But 
I don't think I'm nearly ready for that. And, and I'm having fun right now, so I don't want to. Planning and zoning is a great primer. I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around for a while and yeah, yeah, it's great. Helps a lot. Any more questions for Dave? All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Frank Shane back again. Uh, well, I would like to get on planning and zoning. I think it's the next logical step after the Board of Adjustment. I realize I would have to give up that seat in order to do so, and I'd be willing to do that. Um, I think I've demonstrated some abilities on the Board of Adjustment as far as teamwork and some good judgment. And if not uh, this time around, I'll be back again for another go around. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable with the first. There's uh, three positions out of four names and two of them aren't here. I would have liked to have talked to the two that aren't here. So makes it a little more difficult for us. No more questions for Frank? Then no, thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Your Honor, I have a question for Jennifer. Yes. So in the case of Frank and his Board of Adjustments is up October 31, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. So if he was appointed, when would, when would his service actually begin, November 1? Correct. So they wouldn't necessarily overlap? No. Okay. Okay, Braden Biggs. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Um, Braden Biggs, I do currently serve on uh, three boards, uh, all of which are uh, up for reappointment next year, so 2020. Uh, that's currently Board of Adjustments, the Library Board, and then the Municipal Property Board. Um, I'm applying for planning and zoning tonight, as well as the uh, Arts Commission um, in two weeks from now. Uh, to kind of address the question on which one I would prefer to serve on. Um, I'm most interested, I, I'm, I am interested in both. I think um, similar to Frank being on Board of Adjustments kind of provides a really good leeway into planning and zoning. Um, but I'm also most interested in the Arts Commission as I've followed that from kind of inception and really um, provided insight on that and, and I'm very excited about that one as well. Um, other than that, I'm a 24-year resident of Apache Junction. On the 16th, I can actually, well, 16th of October, I can actually say that not only do I live here, but I work in town as well, so I'm really excited about that. Um, other than that, you all know I'm in the nonprofit world and uh, help to serve the community in, in many different capacities, so. Any questions for Braden? Just so we understand, if you were appointed to this, you would have to resign from the Board of Adjustments, and then we'd have to reappoint somebody else. Correct, yes. And I would be willing as well, um, potentially in two weeks when the uh, Arts Commission is discussed, to leave one of the other potential boards as well, so we can bring in some new blood on, on some of those as well, so. Anyone else? I get it, thank you. Thank you. Colleen Shipman. Okay. Mm. Michael Frank, Jim Duncan. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, Jim Duncan. A um, couple things. I am a graduate this year of the CLI, which I want to say Al did a fantastic job. <laughs> Kudos to him, and thank you for recommending that to me. I uh, also want to give kudos to uh, Matt McNulty, who had to fill in for Al one of the nights. So, and then Matt was there just about every night. So those are all online, if anybody wants to go online and see them. So um, I'm also uh, currently on the Apache Junction Community Development Corporation. And I want to give a shout out for October 26 coming up, Make a Difference Day. Uh, everybody's invited. We have a website that's newly developed and just up and running. So. Uh, ApacheJunctionCDC.com. Everything you need to know about it is right there, and all the events that are coming up are right there as well. So, a lot of things going on. Uh, second year of my retirement now, <laughs> so I'm being selective in the things that I do. 
Um, still trying to clean out that closet. And I haven't been able to do that yet, but that's pretty low on my priority list. Um, happy to answer any questions that you have. You all have my resume. Um, there is one thing, though, I want to say about CLI class, and it was just, like I said, fantastic. Everybody was very well repair, prepared <clears throat> in their presentations. Um, I noticed that it's just the same thing as in a corporation. A city is a corporation. In fact, it's incorporated, right? And so it was pretty familiar to see the class. I was very impressed with Dr. Anderson's presentation, and I want to give another shout out to the two measures that are coming up on, on the ballot for the, our, our school board. I think our children are very, very important to us and uh, have a lot of respect for what we need to do for the city and the Apache Junction Unified School District. So happy to answer any questions. Where did you score that cool uh, AJ Polo? Say that again? That's, oh. where did you score that shirt at? Mr. Al Bravo. Okay. All right, <laughs> so everybody that goes gets one of those. Yeah. We actually had That's a- That's worth it right there. <laughs> We actually had a very large class this year. I think you said it was the largest class we've had and uh, very diverse in the class too. I, I loved every minute of it. So uh, I would like to have, see a CLI number two. Yeah, Mayor, they used to provide uh, the denim uh, jackets right. with the city logo. That's a sharp little shirt there though. I like that one. Mm -hmm. We gave Al some money to <laughs> up the <game. laughs> uh, uh, It's in the budget. <laughs> It wasn't when I attended. Any more questions for Jim? Recession. I got a bag. You got a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. All right, thank you. Richard Cantwell. Richard Cantwell. Dirk, they spelled it wrong again. Dirk Begeman, not Bergeman. <laughs> anybody close to that name? Approach the podium. <laughs> My name's Dirk without the R in the last name. Okay. And I appreciate this opportunity before you. And this is my second time up here. I was up here probably six, eight months ago. And I have an opportunity again to serve this community, which is my greatest desire. I've done that in other communities, and I've done it almost since I was 17 years old in serving this community or this nation in one way or another. Sir, so you're not on any boards as at present? No, I'm on my neighborhood watch. <laughs> and you did the CLI? <laughs> yes, I did a couple years ago. Would you be willing to serve on other boards as well? Absolutely. Just don't make it the, the bikini one. Okay. I think we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that you mean oh, just. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I missed that. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Dirk, I will say that you're at every work session, every council meeting, every <laughs> P&Z meeting that I, when I was on there, mm -hmm. I mean, you definitely are involved and you are up to date on things going on in the city. And for that, I commend you for it. Well, thank you, I do try. Why did you not put in for Board of Adjustment? Actually, it was Barbara that called me and said, do you wanna be on the boards? And I says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wasn't sure which ones I was gonna be applying for, so. Would you be interested in the Board of Adjustments, though? I could be, yes. Yep. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Dirk? Thank you. Thank you. And Dion, we know is not here. Sean, we know is here. I would just like to uh, reiterate my strong desire to work for the city uh, in advancing its future and making sure that we have an eye towards what's proper and right for our kids and, and their future. So again, being on part of the Planning and Zoning Commission, I think would help accomplish that for me and for the city. And I thank you for your time and take any questions. Did you have any flooding where you live? Yes. Yeah, it came down there hard. Mm -hmm. Everywhere did. Uh, nobody escaped it. So yeah, that's, that's very important. Yep. Any more questions for Sean? 
I don't see any, so I think we're done, and we will Thanks be a, picking these tomorrow, yep. correct? I, That's, I have one more, Your Honor, yes. if I can. I have one more question, and I, if I may, I wanted to go back to um, Miss Judy Borey. There were three boards, and I know that she's only up for the one, but if we were, to, if not saying that we're going to do that, but if we were to narrow it down from to two, I would really like to hear from Judy because if there's other ones that, that come up, she may want to, she may want to let this one go is the reason. So I'd like to just ask Judy that question one more time if she would, if she could, answer. Question. And not that we're trying to get rid of you, Judy. We love you. <laughs> um. Okay, question again. If we were to narrow it down to two of the of the of three the three boards. Um, well, I'd like to stay on Park and Rec and Library for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to oh, one other thing. Anybody that wants to get involved with something, you know, coming up in 2022 is our centennial or the of the founding of apache junction when they set down roots here and it meets at our library this thursday at six o'clock so there's a lot of things like that to do also without being on a board and you get to interact with a lot of the city because the whole city will be putting that on and a lot of other uh a lot of other organizations so we, sh we could sure use the help out there as well and just see how that's going to be put together now moving on to 19-471, presentation and discussion on contract J2 engineering and design. Liz. Let me, let me Thank you, Mayor Surdy, members of council. Um, so I will just keep it brief. Uh, in your packet, you have today our um, recommended contract for design services with J2 engineering and env environmental design. Um, this summer, Parks and Recreation received direction to move forward on the proposed off-leash dog park planned for the county retention basin, um, which is here before you've already seen it and kind of approved the general idea. Um, we sought a proposal from J2, and they developed the original cost estimates as well as the conceptual design back in 2015. Um, they have been selected from our council-approved shortlist. Um, of on-call architectural services, and so uh, we talked with them a little bit about what um, our what our final cost for design and construction documents for this park would be. Um, we will be including the county and various interested agencies and community members as we go through these final design and engineering uh, steps. One of the key things that the recent monsoon just reminds us, and I think we were all very well aware that that county uh, retention area does not quite, quite act the way that it should, um, but that is definitely a, a key part of this uh, design here and making sure that we get that part of it right. Um, once it's reconstructed, it must do a better job of retain, retaining and then releasing the water um, in an efficient manner. Uh, I don't have anything else other than you have the contract in front of you, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. When it rains, we could just call it a doggy pool. They could Actually, learn to swim. It's a beautiful lake <laughs> after this huge rain, yes. I'm sure dogs would enjoy it still. Mm -hmm. Some breeds do love to go in the water, mm -hmm. for sure. Labs. <laughs> so this is just on the contract. This is not on discussion on design or things we want in it. So... For the most part, you guys have already kind of approved that this was the design um, that we looked at. There's not a lot, a lot of other choices here. Um, we pretty much can fit what we can fit there. Um, so today's discussion is on the contract for the design. Um, we will certainly be sharing it as we go at that, you know, 60% or 95% phase. But, but for the most part, this is the basic what it's going to look like as far as what we you know some of the few things we add in there we might be coming back and asking about that of our commission um but it'll be basically based on you know what it costs and there will be some alternates that we are asking for them to add in just so that we can look at costs um, for example we are looking at solar lighting um, that can be added in after the fact if we for some reason don't have enough if we don't raise enough in our revenue development for this part that could be an a, a, something we add later um, so they are designing this with that in mind of um, some good alternates that we can either do immediately if the bid is right or add them as we raise other funds. 
So on the uh, contract, does J2 bid on these? Or are they on retainer? How do we always so end up with J2? They are part of the shortlist for on-call architectural services. We um, council approved those for us. They are at the top of our list. So they were interviewed among many other um, contracted, many other architectural firms. And we narrowed it down to three that are on our short list, and J2 is at the top of it. Um, part of the reason why they're selected for this particular one is because they designed both of our master planned dog parks, but they also um, already did the cost estimate and this conceptual design back in 2015. And so um, they have a lot of familiarity with this, but they're also our number, they are our top selected firm that we had brought to council several years ago on the short list. Thank you. Yes. Your Honor. Yes. May I ask a question for Liz? Have we thought about yet maybe what the process will be for <clears throat> construction bids or anything? We got that far yet? Um, will it go out to bid? Will it be designed <clears throat> bid build? Will it be CM at risk? Anything? So I yeah. believe our, we'll be going out for construction bids. So I haven't heard differently in that regard. This is a pretty um, straightforward project. There's not a lot of building on it. It's mostly landscape architect design, but yeah, we will be um, bidding on that part. Which is very familiar to us. That's what we did for City Hall, Municipal Court, and for most of the projects that, that the city has, it's straightforward. We've gone out and had a bid. Design work is a professional service, and state law allows for us to, to do the interviews and, mm -hmm. and then negotiate. But as we spoke earlier, this is we're ahead of the game on this because the basic infrastructure is already there. Mm -hmm. It's a shame to rip up any grass that's there, but I think it's all going to be lifted and... But it's right. not like taking a piece of bare desert and creating this. Go. Correct. And the parking lot's already there. So. Yeah, and Trading. there's a What's ton of trees that we're going to be able to take it a uh, major advantage of. And I think those were some of the things that the Parks and Recreation Commission, as they talked with citizens and as we debated it um, when we chose this site, was just that it is the most logical and um, the most cost efficient one that we could get off the ground in the near future. So, I, I, that w Mayor, you brought up something that I did have a question about was. Um, the parking, if it were to become a really popular park, um, if that, that's going to be a conversation that we could end up having down the road is needing additional parking or where additional parking would be, so, hopefully it will be popular. Yeah, and we've had many conversations with county staff. Uh, we met also with county uh, supervisor Todd House and at the time their county manager as well to talk about some of those issues that we saw maybe being things we'd need to talk about. We'll be working on our IGA. That was also part of the council direction to staff. Um, but as of right now, during the peak times that most dog parks operate, um, there's plenty of parking in the evenings and all that. There's also just across the crosswalk is our huge parking lot that is vacant most of the time over um, by the Parks and Rec offices and the Veterans Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of really adjacent parking that we feel really confident about. Um, but definitely something we want to keep looking at. The county has suggested that if there was a date that was the, their heavier date, they were mentioning Monday mornings, that might be our maintenance day. And I know we're getting off the topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Parking's hopefully, part of hopefully it. okay, thank you. Good. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, good. Okay. Your work session, everything goes yeah. in a work Oh, perfect. Session. Yeah. <laughs> Liz, you said that this was originally J2's design. Is this de design a part of this, or was the design paid for previously? So that was already, so in 2015, it was just a conceptual idea. So as we were realizing that we um, <laughs> did not have the funds and would probably not be having the funds anytime soon for the two master plan dog parks. Um, our Parks and Recreation Director and in conversation with city management as well as county management um, did talk about just exploring other places. And this was just one of them where um, they consulted with J2 as one of our uh, shortlisted con consultants. Uh -huh. And so they paid for that in 2015, this okay. conceptual drawing, as well as the cost estimates that are, so they gave reasonable cost estimates at that time of about $600,000 in 2015. Um, so that's already been done, but that's just the, you know, getting it on paper. This, this contract is for design and engineering the whole work. So this is the actual, yeah, that all looks good on paper, but how are we gonna make sure that it slopes properly, making sure that everybody, you know, goes through everything through development services that's needed. All of this that. is the nuts and bolts. Correct. Of and then it'll it'll also be for the the construction documents that we will be using to go out for bid. 
And so, it, if we approve the contract. Um, but Parks and Rec will actually be doing the nuts and bolts of reviewing and then, if, and like, they, like we were told, they're really excited about this project. Right. So they're gonna be heading it up and then yeah. if there's any funding issues or anything like that, that would come to us, but they will do the big leg, they'll do a lot of leg work. Absolutely, so this is a major topic on our um, list this year for our Parks and Recreation Commission. They've been talking about it for quite a while. They've had um, weigh in on a lot of the things that you see now and, and went and looked at, at various sites. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot of different things, but just some small things that they'll be, they'll be sharing and having a say in some of our revenue development. So as we put together our corporate partnership package and our fundraising, other fundraising opportunities and all of that. So yeah, it will be primarily the Parks and Recreation Commission. It will come back to you all, unless it deviates from this somehow, it would come back to you all when it's time to decide if we're going to go out for construction um, bid RFP. So for what we're doing now, when will we be voting on this? Or so you guys will be voting on us having a contract with J2 to begin this phase tomorrow. That's this will it. be on consent agenda tomorrow um, for just for the design and con construction uh, documents. And those are the pieces we need to do the next steps, like really soliciting for other funds and grants and all of that. Is this where the 63,000 come in for design? Um, <clears throat> yeah, for that and, and creating all the construction documents, attending all the meetings. It is approximately... Designs? What's that? Documents and designs. Correct. And the, yes, the construction documents and then the, des the whole design process, which will go through the next uh, several months. Okay. It's a Nothing significant else. investment. Yeah. It's not it's cheap. I mean, and I would recommend park. also, though, that so there will be significant engineering of this site. So again, as it does not currently um, drain properly and was not constructed properly, however many years ago, um, I think that is very key and critical in this. And so this contract, if you look through some of the um, deliverables, it's a pretty extensive. Um, Studies done by very, very knowledgeable and you know people who have that level of experience, and it definitely is not cheap. Yeah, it's not just putting up a fence and a, right. and a little budget. We sign. really had it's, hoped so, but it really is. No, no, it's not. we know it isn't exactly. No, no. It, it, there's going to be a lot Thank of work you. to it, and, yep. and it's not going to happen overnight either. Right. So people understand that. It's, right. This is being paid for out of our development fee fund. That's what those fees are for, is to build facilities like this, and that's all part of that right now. So the actual um, design and construction documents are not coming out of the you know, city general fund. They're being funded out of development fees. Did okay. we get more than one quote for this? No, so this is who we go, they are the top person on our short list. So we reviewed proposals from the many, several years ago, and they are on our top list of proposals. So per the state guidelines, that is um, what we go through. They are the ones who have the most familiarity with all of this and aren't starting all over again. And so that's definitely something they've um, had all of the project and all of the work whenever this was originally configured, as well as all the price estimates and the um, engineering that was done at that time. So we have the history with them. Correct. So when it comes down time for actual construction of this job, this J2 would be up for that contract? No, but so no. J2 is the design firm. So they're the architectural um, design services. That's what they do. We would be going out to contractors for the bid. J2 will, part of their um, quote for us is helping us with those services, helping us to put together our specifications and all of those kinds of things. But that's what they do in, in every case. We'll it's actually be bidding and that will be open to contractors everywhere. J2 does not build facilities, they the same, design. The same way Flatiron got Correct, and J2 yeah. was our um, design firm that was involved with Flatiron and helped us finalize that process as well as we, they worked daily with the contractors to make sure that they are fulfilling the contract and fulfilling the construction documents as we went. So they'll continue to do that if it's approved. Does the engineer sign off the final product? Yeah, so they are all part of the punch list for everything. They, they basically will be there step by step with us throughout the entire process. We are definitely very um, familiar with working with J2. They've done um, a lot of projects with us, but the most recent was Flatiron. 
Anyone else? Thank you. We'll Thank look you. forward tomorrow. All right. Presentation and discussion on ratification of previously approved number 1915 extinguishment of Forest Street alignment from Tomahawk to Vista. Raquel. Yep. Good evening, Mayor, City, uh, members of the City Council. Raquel Schatz, Public Works um, Engineer. Uh, here, um, back again, uh, we, we went through a resolution to do an extinguishment in July, and tonight we're doing a ratification because there were some um, staff errors. So this four street alignment, um, back in July, a single applicant came in, wanted to extinguish portions of four street alignment. Um, you can see by the map here, it's a little, it's the, it's the yellow area there, and it, um, uh, SR-88 cuts right through it. Um, it's just one of those parcels there that it became into four parcels, and now we can make it into the, the two that it looks like it appears to be. Um, so when I say ratification, there was some staffing error um, in which uh, our Exhibit A, um, it was noticed that there was some some changes between south and north um, in some areas. Oh, no. um, so you can see there in parcel one, um, we, we listed at south. Um, it was found by the, um, uh, by, by the attorney's lawyer, um, or by the attorney's um, surveyor, um, because this is currently in escrow right now, um, that, that this was, uh, was, was done incorrect. So um, their, their, their surveyor is saying that we've incorrectly listed, um, de described in the Exhibit A mm -hmm. um, uh, where we're wanting to extinguish. However, our Exhibit B, the actual drawing itself, was correct. So we're just wanting to ratify this extinguishment. Um, like in cases like in Parcel 1, it says South, where it should say North. Uh, parcel 2. It, we say southwest, and it should be northwest. Uh, parcel three uh, says south, and we should be north. I mean, this was a clear indication that staff had um, described the parcel um, south of of the yellow, um, and we described we we described um, smoke tree instead of forest street alignment. So we're just wanting to make this correction through Exhibit A. Once again, Exhibit B was correct. Um, that was the drawing. Uh, so we'll, the ratification is for permission to correct Exhibit A. And we can do that just by recording the re-recording -re with corrections through Pinal County. And this is also on consent agenda tomorrow? Correct. Um, like I mentioned, um, this is being held up in escrow um, because of this, um, because of the staffing error. Any questions? Any more questions? So the map was correct. It was just the verbiage that was incorrect. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the map exhibit B was correct. Um, right. It was just the verbiage in yep. exhibit A that was incorrect. And it's not the only time this has ever happened in the history correct. of Pinal <laughs> County. Yeah, correct. It's easily, yeah. easily done. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Presentation and discussion regarding the allowable size of park model additions to RV parks and RV subdivisions. We have the next two items. Very exciting items. So we'll also. I'm not sure where it is, Larry. You're going to stay up and do uh, the same. You'll be doing 19451 also. Uh, Rudy's going to do the next one. I okay. Think. Uh, okay. He's going to help out. So is it in. Work session. I hope it's in here. Uh, let's see. Did we? It's on the agenda, right? It's attached. Yeah, I thought it was on the agenda. Do you want me, to go let back? Me pull it up. It's in the yep. yeah. It's in the agenda. Sorry. Let me do it. I'll let you drive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there we go. The beauty of just putting it out there. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor, Council, good evening. Uh, Dave Zellner's here to uh, help as well. We have uh, some feedback that we've gotten from the building community. So 
just some background on park model additions, uh, and Rudy can back me up on this as well. About 15 years ago, this kind of became an issue of the city where we'd have a 400 square foot park model, which is an RV, and people were, build, were wanting to build 2,000 square foot additions to park models. So this primarily happened in some, we have four parks, if you will, that are actually subdivisions. So there's four out of our 125 RV parks, mobile home parks, mobile home subdivisions, we have four RV subdivisions. So this issue really comes up in those RV subdivisions where an individual, they own their own lot. So, um, and especially on corner lots, the corner lots are a little bit bigger, so then they could have a bigger uh, addition. So back in those days, I think what the issue was is people were trying to, within a subdivision, do a lot combination. Then they'd end up with more land, and then they could have a bigger park model addition. And then that kind of went away because even within the parks, I think people felt that there were kind of haves and have-nots. If you were a have-not, you just had your RV, and you may have it a small addition, and then someone else would big a, a park model addition that was bigger than many homes. Um, so we only, we didn't have really any limit in our code on how big these park model additions could be. They were really limited by setbacks that were either established by the park themselves through zoning or uh, in the plat. Um, when we adopted the new building code and the administrative code more specifically, we put in there that they would be limited to 400 square feet, essentially the same size as the park model. And I highlighted the word habitable and I'm going to bring that up in a minute, but note that there's a difference between a park model addition typically have not been known to be habitable spaces. They were supposed to be a family room or maybe a laundry room. Well, now they've evolved into additional sleeping rooms and bathrooms, et cetera, et cetera. So we're basically adding a house onto an mm -hmm. RV. So by also way of background, we do currently regulate the size of a guest house. For example, in uh, anywhere in the city, if you have enough land, you can have a house and then you can have a guest house. Your guest house can be added as part of the footprint of your main home or it could be a separate unit, but we limit that to half the size of your house. So you have a 2,000 square foot house, you can have a 1,000 square foot guest house, etc. We also limit the size of garages or accessory buildings, if you will. So if you have a 1,000 square foot house, you can have a 1,000 square foot accessory building. So it's not unusual for cities to regulate the size of a second, like a guest home or, or even a garage. So Mesa, if you will, um, they limit theirs uh, the same that we just did to 400 square feet. Then they allow you 120 square foot for storage. In other words, it's 520, but Mesa has on the plans, they stamp the plans, this is not habitable, you're not supposed to be sleeping there. Um, we have taken the position that we don't say that on our plan. So our, our current code, even though it says 400, we don't say you can't sleep there, but Mesa does. So we are today the same square footage, but we're more liberal in that we say that you can actually sleep there. Uh, we looked around in some other cities, Casa Grande, they approved the development and they limited in that plan development that a Arizona room, if you want to call it that, couldn't, could be limited to the same size. So again, this notion that um, cities are limiting the size of an addition to an RV to 400 square feet is not uh, without precedent. Bullhead City, though, they decided that it can't be smaller than 300, but it can't be larger than 750. Um, Marana, their code essentially says it's up to the zoning administrator to decide how big it is, and, and usually those are again sized by the setbacks that you can have, three foot setback, five foot setback. Uh, other cities that have a, lar a large uh, RV uh, contingent, if you will, they don't regulate the size that we could find. So um, there are some, uh, so what happened was as the code came out, um, some folks already had some contracts with homeowners and we said, okay, we'll honor those. Even if you've signed a contract before the new code went into, you want to do a thousand square foot addition, we as staff will issue building permits. So we met with about six contractors about um, three, four weeks ago 
And they said, we said, submit your permits, we'll approve them because we're gonna honor uh, something even though the code uh, now might not permit it. So what the building industry is saying, they're, they're suggesting that we limit the size of, we're calling it conditioned space, so that's the space, the habitable space, could be up to 48% of the lot coverage. That's another approach. Um, so you could have a park model and a park model addition. They would be limited to 48% of the overall lot space. But then you could still have a patio cover, you could have a carport. So we're not saying you can't build other things on your property, but the condition space would then be limited to 48% of the lot coverage. Again, we have four of these RV, RV subdivisions. We're not suggesting that all the other RV parks where there's one owner of all the land that we really only, if we're gonna go back either to the way it was, that we limit it to these four subdivisions and not open it up where, because we do have cases where a park owner, they, the homeowner may own the park model, but the park, um, the a park owner essentially right. could own the park model addition because um, they're doing it in concert with the, with the or that the, the unit owner Sometimes they'll lease the park model and the, and the addition, et cetera. Um, but I think we want to try to limit it to these four parks. Again, I think primarily it kind of comes down to these corner lots where they are <coughs> bigger lots. Um, one of another suggestion that it seems that Mesa does is to allow uh, or require additional fire safety. In other words, you'd have to have um, a, um, a firewall that's a little, you know, a, a two-hour firewall or a one-hour firewall, something like that. And again, um, what we're suggesting, if you go back and, so the options are, do we go back to where there's no limit? Do we set it at 400? Do we set it at 750? Do we just say, well, you gotta meet setbacks and we're gonna limit it to the, the 48%. So there's a couple options here um, and we're kind of bringing it up for a discussion. So again, I mentioned before, if you previously contracted, we allowed people to go forward. So do you wanna give us direction to staff at a future meeting? We're not asking for direction to staff tonight, we're just bringing the issue forward to you and then we can come back with, uh, or maybe you wanna ruminate on it and we can come back a month from now or a couple of weeks and, and have a little bit further discussion about, do you wanna go back to the old day where we just said no limit or do you wanna set a limit so officially, Joel, we can't even give direction tonight, correct? correct? <coughs> you can give us head nods, you, I think. You can, <laughs> you can talk about how you feel about it, but you can't give direction. Yeah. I, I have a construction question. That might be it, Dave. <laughs> well, I, I never thought about it until you just mentioned a firewall. And so in our current code, we don't require a firewall between knowing that these are built to an RV standard and not a uniform building code standard. We don't require a firewall between the new addition and the RV. Mayor Council, um, the, the firewall that is being referenced is that between the addition and maybe the next lot the oh, park model the outside, or the not right, the right. inside. Okay. Yeah, we, we don't look at trying to protect the addition from the RV. RV. That's itself. not the thing. And the firewalls are, are a nice thing that one, one of the issues is that as these things get bigger, the fire load that is there is much greater than what it was expected to be when these were laid out mm -hmm. with three foot setbacks. Right. So it does complicate things for the fire department um, and so you know trying to kind of restrict that is, is part of that idea so the 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 building code with non-sprinklered houses which is what we have requires a minimum of five feet for each house from a property line and then so in if you have two houses next to each other you get a minimum of 10 feet and the size of the house is not restricted. It's, it's just we're going to separate these by this much. When these parks were laid out, the RV parks and stuff, because you had a small RV, it was kind of thought, well, we, we don't have the same load. You know, some other dynamics will go and say that these only need to be six feet apart. So 
but as things have evolved and the market's changed and people's wants and needs and demands have, have kind of changed, we've ended up getting, uh, we've got one that actually is a, an addition that has two bedrooms and two baths in it. And so these, you know, I, I can understand the, the desire to have an extra bathroom, you know, run into that problem before <laughs> in my own life. So, you know, we, we understand that there's some need, but the idea that these can become that kind of thing, it just, I think it has some issues. The other thing that's not well understood is that a lot of these parks, when they were laid out 50 years ago, the size of the electric service and stuff like that was predicated on a RV that was gonna take 50 amps to run. Well, you put a park model, a new park model in, in addition, and all the air conditioning, and you're pushing 150, 200 amps. Well, the actual infrastructure that SRP put in, or the parks put in, put in, is really under a lot of pressure. So there's a couple dynamics that play into why we kind of wanted to, to set a threshold. And I do want to point out, so Mesa's is total enclosed of 520. Ours is just limiting the habitable addition to 400. We're not saying what that there's a limit on storage. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's kind of two differences in how we've approached that. So just, um why 48 percent and not 50 percent what what what's the reason? i believe that number came from from some other places that the the contractors had worked in I'm, i don't remember exactly but i think it was something that they had encountered somewhere else i mean 48 50 is probably not a lot of difference I think it's in the i think the discussion was that's in some of the ccnrs or the architectural okay, guidelines yeah, of like road haven yeah. road haven only allows you to go 48 percent so um, I think that's where that, if that's our local standard, then it's not the, you got, still have to meet setbacks no matter what, yeah. but then is it, rather than say it's um, 400 square feet or 520, it's 48% 40 and we were gonna call it the condition space, in other words, not including a shed or a carport or a yeah. non-conditioned Arizona room, if you will. Just easier to calculate 50% than 48%. Well, it could be. But, <laughs> but if one of the one of the parks already is at 48, then that was kind of where the, okay. the contracting community kind of came forward and said, well, Roadhaven kind of set that limit. What do you think about that? So again, maybe I did word this wrong. We really are not supposed to get direction to staff, but if you have some yeah. thoughts, then just, so that's just kind of the, so we do want to bring this forward. So if you want us to go back and change uh, the administrative code, we're happy to do so and you know put some put some parameters back on it somewhere it just seemed right now there it was unlimited as to the size of the addition that you could put on within the i mean still setbacks right. and all that but still i'm thinking of some people in the community that are going to hear this now and not be real happy <laughs> well nobody has to change anything that's already there correct yeah no one this is just you know, going so forward. forward. Going, so if yeah. someone says, yes, I want to, you know, we're not going to make someone tear off 100 square feet off their no, 2,000 no. square foot addition, but. We're going to grandfather everything in. Yeah. If everything choose, currently If we is, choose yeah. to do this. Yeah. yeah. So which, which way are you more comfortable at the 400, no, as habitable or the 48%? Um, I don't know if I have a preference really to be honest with you, I think if we already have these lots, what's happened, these lots were built for, originally contemplated for park model, mm -hmm. and now park models are getting bigger, they want those to get bigger, and then uh, I think as long as we're maintaining some sort of um, uh, public safety, fire safety, that Absolutely. for this, if we are gonna be six feet apart, then we certainly have to insist on that outside wall being uh, higher fire rated, and then, um, limit it to the four parks, and then I think we're okay with the 48%. So we're but, stuck with the big red barn on Idaho? Well, we're not That's even not talking about RV that tonight, park. but yes, we are. <laughs> the way that it sits right now, though, you said that they could that it, they could build so that it is in, it, they could live in it. They could have What we do, going back to that, um, Mesa doesn't, Mesa just, it's kind of like nod, nod, wink, wink. They don't, you can build this, a 400 square foot addition, Mesa just stamps the plans not habitable. They go out and do the inspection, looks like it's a TV room, and then and maybe a bathroom, but your habitable space is 
uh, in the RV. But we're also hearing that folks are modifying the RVs, basically taking the bedroom and the bathroom and turning that into like a master bedroom or master bath. So they're taking the bedroom and the bath that's in the RV, opening that up into a master bath inside the RV and then replacing that inside the addition. So now they have a bathroom and a bedroom out there. So if they're built really to the residential code, because really they are now, then doesn't matter. We're saying it's okay to say they're habitable. Mesa has still chosen to say they're not habitable. So again, I think currently we're more liberal than Mesa in terms of both. We're on the same par now in terms of square footage, but we don't do the nod, nod, wink, wink. We acknowledge that people are probably gonna sleep there, so we, we think we should, for safety reasons, build it such that it's safe for people to sleep there. I agree. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, <clears throat> now I see this is for like the, only in the RV subdivisions. Uh, you probably remember this probably about two years back. Um, a guy was on a lot out in the desert there and he <laughs> kept building additions onto a single wide where that thing actually ended up inside of his house. Yeah, that was a mobile home, manufactured, actually a mobile home, and he mm -hmm. built a house around. We're still dealing with that project, by the way. Right, so I mean, um, but now these mobile homes, they're, they're comparable to what you see in these parks. I mean, it's virtually, you say park model, now those things are tiny, 400 square feet. But most of these things are encroaching 1,000 square feet, 800 to 1,000 square feet, which is kind of along the same lines of what that guy did. Now, is, can we have these same sort of restrictions on those types of situations as well, so that doesn't seem to happen anymore? I think we've had, we ran into another one recently, didn't we, where someone built a house around a mobile home and then pulled out the mobile home? So that's really kind of a building code enforcement type thing as opposed to saying, well, we're gonna limit you. We don't allow, if you go to older parts of the city, you'll see where they basically built a roof over a mobile home uh, and then they've tried to enclose that. And we, we don't allow you just to build like a shade structure over your mobile home anymore because it evolves into uh, pulling out the mobile home and it becomes a house. So that we've kind of put the kibosh on that. Um, and what we're seeing now though is really just newer modular or manufactured homes going in. So we do see these older ones going away and they'll put in a new one. So I don't think it's a huge problem that we're seeing. We have a couple instances where someone build a home around a well, start off home. as an addition right and started out as an addition and another then, but, but I don't think we see a lot of it that um, we need to address okay 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 so that's all we have I think the last slide says discussion questions so um, we can bring something back if you want and then um, I guess we need direction to staff next correct mr. Stern and then after that we would bring an ordinance back in another so, Four. Your, your Honor, yes. so this is one of those that staff brings to us and at the management office and says, hey, this is something we, we don't even know. It's not on the work plan, it's not on the strategic plan, but something we deal with a lot might be something council would like to know about. And then it gives us an opportunity just to talk about in work session. This is like pre-pre-direction of staff. So if there is some interest, we can start the process to come back for direction of staff if you're interested. Well, unfortunately, I you know, like anything else, we're the ones that have, end up having to protect the cities. And I personally, you know, if you have a 400 square foot park model to double a size, another 400 square feet, I mean, we don't allow houses to, in traditional subdivisions do that unless the setbacks are, are met. So I don't have a problem with them being able to double the size, but um, I, I think it has, we have to set a limit. And again, that 48% of the lot area may, and along with meeting setbacks, some of these parks have uh, quirky setbacks because of utility easements with SRP or a gas company or mm -hmm. something. So some, some of these lots have 10 foot setbacks in the rear because of a utility easement and some may only have three or five. So it, it, it is kind of quirky, but so the 48% the I think, or 50, kind of gets you at 
uh, at that. And that's habitable mm -hmm. space, and that may also limit the size. And may, we may end up with something on average that's between 600 or 750 or something. Mm -hmm. And again, I think it's more so on these bigger corner lots than, than something in the middle of these parks. So, okay. I think we're ready for the next one, Matt. Yep. So presentation and discussion on self-policing RV parks. Rudy is gonna, Rudy is the uh, expert on this. So Rudy's gonna come up and I think you all got the staff memo. It kind of explains it. Back in the 90s, the city allowed these self-policing parks and it, some of them decided it wasn't worth the effort and others, I think our experience, and we'll go through some of these, um, is they really have not policed themselves. So we're really asking, as uh, Brian indicated, this is kind of a policy discussion. Do we wanna continue these? And we'll have some examples of, of uh, some pretty egregious of them not policing themselves. So I'm gonna have Rudy. Good evening, good evening Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rudy Esquivius, the planning manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, back in uh, 1992, the city started requiring permits for park models and other uh, attachments to park models, such as the awnings and the Arizona rooms that Larry just spoke of. Um, it was the opinion of the building official at that time that some of these installations were more permanent than temporary, like motorhomes and RVs and travel trailers that come and go. Uh, there were, of course, uh, uh, there was an outcry. There were a lot of folks, owners of parks, managers of parks, that uh, did not uh, like the new rules. In the end, most uh, park owners, uh, a huge, a grand majority of the park owners agreed to abide by the new rules. There were a handful of parks, originally eight parks, that, uh, you know, just uh, didn't want to have to require their, their tenants, their, their guests to require, to get permits. Uh, so that's where the city came up with these self-policing agreements. And basically the self-policing agreements uh, required uh, managers and owners to be responsible for park model installations and that these installations and the other structures complied with city's setback regulations and building codes. Um, now, originally parks had these agreements very quickly. Uh, three of those parks opted out of the agreements uh, as, real, uh, as park owners and managers realized the difficulty of getting compliance. Maybe they didn't have the expertise, maybe they weren't up on all the building codes, mm -hmm. they got tired of arguing with tenants about how much they can build and where it can go. So, so right, up, right off the bat, uh, three of the parks opted out. Uh, and then, of course, the parks who did continue with the agreements, over the years we have discovered many, 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 many violations. Agreements, in our opinion, never really worked. Uh, so staff bring this item to, your, to you for your consideration. We, are, we recently adopted some new building codes. You just heard a presentation about uh, maybe making some more changes. We've got our new zoning ordinance coming up. You know, as long as we're looking, at, we got our new general plan coming up. As long as we're looking at those types of uh, new items, maybe it's time to bring this back into the discussion again. We've got some examples here. Um, this is a typical, uh, one of the RV parks that has a self-policing agreement. In this particular drawing, these are the only two units that comply with the six foot separation. Okay, in RV parks, basically there's a three foot setback all the way around, on the side, on the front, on the sides. So ideally, six foot separations between units. This is not six feet. This is not six feet, this is not six feet, and then some of these, you don't even have a six foot separation at the rear. This is, this is typical of, of the problem that we are discovering in, in some of these self-policing parks. Uh, this, these two units here maybe have a four or five foot separation, but like I said, as best as I could scale it, these are the only two in this example that actually meet the six foot separation. Uh, can you imagine being a uh, a policeman or a fireman trying to squeeze through these units inches apart to save somebody or, or, or respond to a fire or something like that. It's a, it's a health and safety issue as well. Uh, here we have another example. Uh, this is an example uh, here in the close-up. Uh, looks like uh, there was an RV here, there's the tip-outs, then somebody built a little awning, then somebody built a storage room, then somebody built whatever this thing is, and then, and then there was another awning, and there's another storage room back here. Once again, units literally inches apart. I think in this particular example, the only units that meet the six-foot separation are these two. Uh, but once again, back-to-back, side-to-side, uh, very little compliance. This is, this is a different park that also has a self-policing agreement with the city. 
This one here, sometimes we see structures built all the way to the property line or over the property line. Um, you know, things get away from managers, they don't pay attention, they don't want to argue with people, managers come and go, there's a loss of knowledge, there's a loss of uh, information about uh, what the self-policing agreement means, how it's supposed to be applied, uh, and that is a typical uh, issue. Here we have a, a person who got a permit for the park model, got a permit for the awning, and then these things appeared. Uh, this is an area that, that has a, a fairly significant uh, wash issue. Uh, in order to accommodate these things and protect these things, uh, a wall was constructed, which is now constraining the wash. This particular issue has cost us uh, quite a bit of money in, in engineering studying, trying to mitigate and, and, and mediate between these these two property owners and the pinching of this wash that has been created by unpermitted structures and, and other issues. So this is just a, a typical example of, of what we deal with. There's about 125 mobile home and RV parks in the city and only four or five still have the policing agreement. So our question to you is, should we keep them? Should we overturn them once and for all and everybody is subject to the same rules, everybody's subject to the same permit requirements. That is the reason why we bring this item uh, to you for discussion, Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Yes. No, that's all. Just yes. <laughs> oh. Could I uh, could I get the chief up? Yep. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Rudy. <laughs> chief, do you, uh, in your time here, do you know of any problems with these uh, being so close? Well, we have had, and I'm not sure if the specific ones are at hand, but we have had one where an individual was doing a self-loading firearms place that caught in a fire and several of the units went up. And if you look at these things, if a fire did go up, they're, all, they're worse than row homes and it would probably be a, a pretty tragic situation. Mm -hmm. As far as the officers go on, we deal with a lot of different variables and we accommodate and struggle through those things, but this is just one of the many different issues we have to face. Do you, do you see anything else that we should be looking out for? Well, there's yeah. always, I mean, th simple things that we look at as a public safety, simple things as addresses on homes. We have a lot of those throughout the community that there's mailbox out in front of the thing and there's four or five homes back there and multiple people living there. And if you go on certain areas of the city, we rarely know where actually the call is coming in from mm -hmm. because it's four or five different pieces living on a property, but again, those are the, some of the things we normally routinely struggle through. But I think staff has identified some. Do we require house there. numbers? Pardon me? Do we require house numbers They're to be visible? To posted. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But again, it's like a lot of that self-policing of those individual mm -hmm. lots. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. What, what kind of seems surprising to me is that the the park managers are just letting somebody build wherever. You have a lot size, that's yeah. your, those are your boundaries and you see these that are, it, Rudy, you alluded, surprising. Oh, Rudy, you alluded to some of the reasons why that happens in terms of institutional knowledge there. There may be managers that don't even know. Well, some of the site plans, I was gonna say, this is an example here where this addition was done without a permit and, and it's not even the original buyer, this is like the second owner. They're having to deal, like I'm sure over last week, this water <coughs> used to somewhat go this way and go this way, and we've met on site with this person. Basically the water kind of flooded them out back here. But this was supposed to be a vacant lot. We have correspondence that this whole thing was supposed to be moved over to a different lot. The site plan is not really even a site plan, it's more of a drawing, and it shows this area as being open space on the, the plan. So many of these older parks, uh, and I don't know if this one predated the city or not, Rudy. Very early part. Our very early part of the city. We didn't, you don't get scaled drawings. And so you see a lot of places where um, one space owner kind of, because they don't know where the lot lines are, start encroaching into the neighbor space. Uh, this is just an example here where it's pretty egregious that this they never really followed the original. This was supposed to be a vacant thing, I am pretty sure because of this wash, major wash that goes through there. Did that answer your question, I think? I hope. It wasn't really a question, oh. it, just, it was just surprising to see 
how yeah. close some of these were and how they were just yeah, and again, this is we're, <laughs> we're not saying here we're going to be able to go back and make everybody undo everything, but as someone tries to come and get a permit, we want to make these things as safe as we can. We have one that is not even one of these parks, but just very old park, and w we got alerted to it because 911 couldn't get in there. There was, to I mean, these are somewhat new, but the, the wires were so old, they're hanging down and the trucks couldn't get in. But it looked an awful lot like um, one of these other diagrams where it's kind of like this, where they're all kind of rafted together. And I think in talking to Mesa, that's where they really start insisting that you gotta have six foot separation between these things. So anything that requires a permit, we require the six foot separation. So this one, uh, we need to get it on to Correct. And to be honest, yeah. we haven't talked to these five parks. Maybe they're, you know, we need to have some outreach with them so they know we're they're having this dialogue. We wanted to bring it here. Um, <laughs> before and we'll do that before we come and there back. again you can't make them tear this down but we just gonna not let this happen they deal with the non-conformities I mean they're having to deal with it but I think if a new permit comes in then we see something that needs to be retrofitted we can well, certainly the, try the to altering do. washes affects the whole city which we just found out That's what a lot of the calls that we took are because people are talking about washes being altered certainly. upstream from them so yeah that does affect so we have a separate dialogue going on for this one for so about a year and a half yeah. what happens mm -hmm. in the case where it it looks like they've like you said they've squeezed it i mean well here their proposal nothing. again this is still in discussions but they might take this and try to move it to the other side or something and 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 get rid of this space ultimately in theory they could move this whole thing over but so i don't have in a other problem. cases i do think it's going to be um very difficult to go turn the clock back. Yeah. And again, all we can really do is educate and ex explain to them the whole rationale. But again, part, could be part of it because they had such poor park maps that they really didn't know where the, the lot lines were. And again, you could have folks saying, hey, I'm, or that's after the fact. They come and somebody comes in, and on Monday morning, the manager comes in, and now there's this addition that's been put on over the weekend. So, so I don't have a problem with people doing you know, tearing out bathrooms and bedrooms inside their house, but when it affects other people downstream, then definitely need to have a little bit of input on it, so. Okay. Any, anyone else? Yep, that's all we need tonight. I think that is the last thing on the agenda, and we'll be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock.